All right, welcome everybody to today's. It's billed as a debate, but I believe Joe doesn't like that word. He believes to yeah. call, he 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 wants to call it a discussion. I don't see debates as negative, but you know whatever. I build it as a debate, but if you guys don't like it, whatever. So Joey, can I call you Joey? Yeah, I don't really care. But okay, but I have been very critical of you. Does that concern you? Um, some of your comments online are a little uh. Is it concerning that I've called you a wanker? Yeah, I, I would describe intellectually sure. That that's a word that I would use. You you wouldn't like that when I've called you a wanker? Yeah, I'd say intellectually immature. That's what I would describe it as. Okay, that's fine. I've called you that. So now tell me, you actually think that Paul Draper is a good philosopher, or do you have to just be political about that? <laughs> so he's one because of the because my my impression was that he's horrible. <laughs> he, no. I mean, yeah, but you go you go ahead. No, he's one of the most um, well-respected in um, philosophy of religion. I mean, his um, his paper, what is it, uh, Pain and Pleasure, an Evidential Problem for Theists or something, it's one of the most uh, cited um, papers in all of philosophy of religion. So, And he, like, started, he coined the term skeptical theism, and yeah, he's just huge in the, in the literature and so on. And um, lots of philosophers think that he's one of the best uh, non-theist philosophers alive, like Trent Doherty um, and lots of others, so... But I, it's unfortunate that I have had to disagree with every one of your points you made. Uh, I guess I abstracted four points. I don't know if there were more, four serious objections, and I thought all of them were bad. But we'll get to that later. Yeah, a Bayesian evolutionary argument from evil. So basically, um, we know that there's been hundreds of millions of years of animals uh, predating mm -hmm. one another, parasitism, languishing, um, just some profound suffering for non-human uh, animals for... Uh, hundreds of millions of years indeed and um, this seems much more surprising under a view on which God is omnibenevolent and providentially orders creation because this is the very means or mechanism by which uh, God brings humans for instance into being it's, it seems as though it's the very engine of his creation this kind of death and predation and suffering and blood and language mm -hmm. and so on so I think it's less it's much more surprising on theism than it is on the hypothesis of indifference, what Paul Draper calls a hypothesis. Well, the funny is, the funny thing is, I've heard the argument. And I used to, I, I came to conclude that it's a horrible argument, and I'm surprised that you would consider that the best one. Oh, I didn't say it was the best one. Oh no. So, do you yeah, have I, a I best one? Is, I think I just think this is one argument uh, that weighs. But in you, my do you think it's good? I'm sorry, I, I don't like Draper. <laughs> is that a problem? I hope it isn't because I think he's a horrible philosopher. But it's fine. So let's, let's. How many papers? How many like? Ha, ha, are you familiar with his work? Like, what are some titles of his papers that you've read that you didn't like? Uh, I read the one that Leon linked. He links a couple about some suffering, and then I listened to like that debate with Craig, where his part of evidence was theists don't behave any better in my experience or some nonsense like. But we don't have to go in there. I want you to tell me why should I, okay, uh, like why should I abandon my views because my views are that. The cosmological and I guess ontological arguments and teleological arguments lend support to God of classical theism. Why ought I abandon that? What um, what do you think should lead me, as a classical theist who believes that the Kalam is sound and leads to the cloud of classical theism, who believes that uh, various cosmological are sound, arguments are sound, to abandon my position and believe in a? I, I'm sure you're not an atheist, but whatever you are, I, I think some kind of an agnostic. But uh, he develops a causal finitus. If it's any help, I consulted Alex Proust to help me debunk your uh, Aristotelian proof. Uh, oh, well, oh. the thing. So, I mean, if that's any encouragement. Oh, okay. I won't be ripping off him, though. I, I just asked him for an assessment. Oh, OK. OK. Interesting. Yeah. Right. Me and Alexander Proust are close. Well, we're not close, but we dialogue with each other. Yeah. Yeah. He, on he answers most emails. So. But let's. OK, so let's start with number three. OK. Is that fine with you? Sure. Okay. So you say you don't seem too happy. Is that just my perception? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, I say okay. we let's go. All right. So you're saying that the third one undercuts classical theism. Now I have to correct. I have to correct this again. It's a technical issue. I I think that classical theism is compatible with a universe that's always exists. But let's rephrase that to say it undercuts my kind of classical theism. 
So maybe I can spell it out for you again. I, I said premise 7, so I, I'm targeting premise 7, and I read out premise 7. I pointed out how premise 7 treats creation as the causing of potential being to go from potential being to actual Let's say there is no creation. The, the Aristotelian proof is committed to there being creation. So... Okay, I, I, okay, maybe I don't have it because I'll have to open the paper now. You believe that a water can be actual, actually H2O, and then at some moment stop being H2O, right? I don't understand. Water has to exist in a world. Well, I guess water is a bad example, but for example, you would have to have. Uh, okay, for but instance, what? Just, okay, but let, well, let me let me let me continue. Right, right, dude. Let me be the foundational component. I don't understand. Are, are you saying the law of gravity depends on you or is part of you? No, no, dude. A prevention. No, prevention of oh, no, okay, listen, right, right, dude. Okay. So maybe this is just a terminological issue. But this is a trivial point because you said anything that directly acts on it. Like, for example, air, you're just going to reinterpret it being part of it. And anything that is... Okay, listen, dude. All right? All right, dude? Okay? No. I didn't. If you want to misrepresent me, you can. But... Okay, go ahead. Explain. Maybe I was wrong. Now, let's start from the beginning. Uh, everything that begins to exist as a cause. Do you disagree? Uh, I think that's plausible, so we can grant okay. that. Uh, what about the universe began to exist? You said you also agree with this. Well, I'm kind of agnostic. Okay, on... okay but you lean towards it. Okay. Well, Therefore, the well... Okay, but didn't you say you lean towards causal finitism? Well, no, I said I was agnostic on causal finitism. Okay. Okay, but you believe that the universe began to exist in some possible world, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's possible. You think there's a logical contradiction being entailed by the it universe? Lo oh my, no, logical, dude, we're talking about metaphysical possibility. Logic, that's different from logical contradictions and so on. Okay, okay. so we're going to say that the stage one could succeed. Okay. So let's continue then. So g give me in the minute summarize what are your objections to divine simplicity? I believe that you don't like that doctrine for some reason. Uh, so I definitely can't do that in well two minutes. You know, I, I think it's time for you to go. Is that mm -hmm. correct? All right. Yeah. So everybody, uh, I want you to subscribe to me first of all. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me. Bye. All right. See ya. All right. See you later. Bye. All right, well, that went well. What do you guys think? Did you guys think that went well? I don't know. Something about him is annoying. <laughs>